All right, so I'm getting ready to wire in the um, one wire alternator. Um, got this painless harness uh, for a high amp alternator. Comes with the um, wire, some zip ties. Uh, comes with a fuse, which is nice. Um, looks like some tools as well, so we'll look at that. Haven't opened that up yet, but um, what I'm looking at right now is I pulled the alternator back off. Um, and when you're looking at it, it sits like this in the car. So basically up uh, like this. And it means this bolt is facing up and kind of near the engine. You can't get to it. Um, I don't think that one I need to get to, but this one I need to get to. And it's down uh, <laughs> in a tough spot. And so what I'd like to do is kind of move it out here. Um, and so with uh, these CBF um, alternators, uh, you can just uh, pop these four bolts off or loosen them. I don't know if you have to pull them all the way off. We'll find out in a minute. And then um, clock this uh, backside to where it needs to go. Yeah, so we removed the four bolts. those out uh, so to loosen the housing but don't remove it so I'm going to loosen it up and I'm going to clock it so looking at it this way I'm going to clock it probably like that now that the power is going to be down and away, the clock it more, it would be up. That might be easier. I'll do it this way. So that would be right there. Okay, so I have to do the wiring actually over here on the car um, because um, we're integrating the painless harness. Um, so uh, the cool thing about this kit that I got with the one wire um, alternator wiring kit uh, from painless is it has instructions with uh, references to the painless main harness. So you can see here it's referencing uh, cable 915 is going to be connected to the alternator and so if you look at the ends of these cables these are labeled with the 900 uh, um, labeling so this one's 915 I already stripped the end back uh, stripped the end back of that guy um, so you know just so you know I couldn't use my regular strippers on that I had to just use like a um, like a box cutter and kind of cut the um, end off there and so I'm probably going to cut a little off the ends of these uh, just because they're going to both go into this terminal and this has a little short uh, end on it and then I'm going to put a heat shrink on those and uh, put it together so uh, let me grab that and this uh, kit came with the heat shrink which is nice some of these already have uh, ends on them as well so part of this kit actually has that which is awesome <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and set this up and hopefully crimp this in let's see here already put this boot on um, I might just go with the boot actually now that I look at it in order to do that I need to run this cable in through there so let me do that 
Okay, um, it's a tight squeeze to get those both in there. I haven't crimped it yet. Um, there's one little wire that kind of snuck out on me, but that one, it's not a big deal. Um, so once I get both those on there, I'll slide this boot up and then um, we should be able to attach it to the alternator. So I'll grab this guy and see if I can crimp this hard enough. Actually, I'm gonna go, yeah, should be all right. <sighs> All right, a good connection on there. It should be good. Coming off. Just want to make sure we have good contact is the main thing. I might squeeze a little bit in the front and the back too, just to. Ah. too easily but it's not too bad. <clears throat> Obviously you want to get it up over the eye there. there and that'll keep it safe. Looks pretty good that way. So now um, we need to get the fuse onto the chassis. When you're looking at aesthetics it's nice to put things on and kind of decide where things are going to go. I was looking at where I was going to put this uh, MIDI fuse um, <clears throat> and so I was going to go ahead and put the cable onto the um, alternator and start taking a look at that <laughs> but when I got it on there um, the way we clock the alternator right here I can't get this uh, bolt off to um, put the cable on there because of the um, where that dipstick is um, so I'm gonna have to pull the alternator back off clock it I think I'm gonna clock it um, uh, down this down to this part right here so it'll be what 45 degrees or something Okay, now you can see we're clocked um, like 45 degrees. Um, I guess it'd be counterclockwise from the front. Um, so I'm gonna be able to attach this now. Right here. And then we'll run it somewhere across here. I think I'm gonna keep that thing down low. I'm thinking about just attaching to that frame rail right there. Um, but I'm gonna kind of mock it up. Uh, maybe something like that, I don't know. I gotta mock it up and take a look at what it's gonna look like. So, I'm gonna do that. Okay, after massive amounts of self-deliberation, I finally decided to put that uh, that fuse right there, the mini, the mini fuse. Um, and so I cleaned up some of this wiring ran like the headlight cables through that hole, um, ran the, uh, this is the parking light and stuff kind of through there. I zip tied these um, right here to 
loosely so that they're gonna just kind of sit in here. Um, and then I pulled this cable almost completely out. I'm gonna end up cutting it out because I don't need it. I don't need this whole little harness right here. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. Um, and then I gotta kind of clean this up as well. Um, but I just wanted to look at how it's all gonna come in here because uh, cables can just turn into a real nightmare, just um, making a big uh, jumbled mess if you're not careful. So um, I'm gonna try and take my time and route it as cleanly as possible. Now I'm gonna route this cable, um, kind of just loop it down and then up to here, like so. Man, it's kind of stuck, but um, right here. And then uh, I'll have to make the other side. Um, so I'm gonna start on that. All right, I went ahead and stripped this one back. I cut it and stripped it back, I should say. Um, it's a little scary always when you're cutting two length and so this one's just gonna be right there so that's what I got. I'm gonna oh I don't wanna forget my heat shrink. I'm gonna put that on there. Slide that down and then get my crimp tool. I'll crimp this on. Ended up getting a slightly smaller terminal, getting it to crimp on there, and then I'm just gonna run it to where I was going to here. And then, there we go. I'm gonna put it on there to start forming to where I want it to. It'll take a little while, obviously. And I might have to use some clips or something to figure out how to get that to stay there, but that's kind of what I want is to follow that line there. Okay, just correction, 916 from the uh, harness goes to this side actually, and then this side will be uh, more of the battery cable that will go to the battery. So I'm going to strip this and just put one of these little already insulated um, deals on. See if that's heat shrink or not. Doesn't seem to be. Nope. That's not heat shrink, so. Uh, might get a little. Throw it on there. Alright, throw a little heat shrink on that one. It's gonna go on there. Take that. Turn this one maybe. end up zip tying or looming these together. Um, so I'm going to throw that little nut on there and then work on the next cable. All right now I got this one um, terminaled and heat shrinked. I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to leave the rest of this uncut because um, the other end is going to need a terminal that goes to the starter solenoid and I'm not sure if I'm going to use the standard starter solenoid or if I'm going to use a mini starter, I think I'm going to use the mini starter, which means I'll cut this pretty short, uh, keep the battery right here, something, you know, close to like this, um, and then uh, and then I'll just put um, the 
a big terminal on there, run it down to the starter, um, use the rest of this cable most likely. Ow, that was my foot. So that's going to sit there and should be good for a little bit. Okay, of course, I'm going to put my fuse in there. At this, I think I'm going to pop those off of there, put the fuse in, and then put the um, tunnels on. So, fuse aside, pop these off. Uh, oh, I didn't want to come off. Alright, fuse in, face it out so I can see it. If I ever need to, which I really hope I don't. I was worried about mounting it upside down is because it actually says painless on it. Um, sticking in a little bit there, I'll figure that out. That's uh, probably just because those two cables, though. Not too bad. I'm kind of happy with that actually. And then, uh, like I said, I'll route these down here somehow, keep them in there and all the time together. Um, and then the battery tray when it goes in will hide some of these cables underneath as well uh, so that'll be nice all right progress okay um, we're gonna uh, ground strap from the engine um, <clears throat> I'm a big proponent of grounding the engine I know you know that you're grounded with the bolts and things that come from other places and like the um, engine mounts a lot of times but um, this grounds it directly to the frame rail. I think you just can't beat that. The only reason I ran it kind of like how I have it right here is um, because of logistics. I had to g be able to get my um, drill in this spot. So I got the transmission over there. So that was the only place I could really get to. Um, looks like it's on there, but it's got room between the two. They're not. It's not really going to move much anyways. So. Should be in good shape. Um, I got a couple other ground traps I'll use for other things as well. One more simple little step here. Um, <clears throat> I put in this uh, temperature sending unit, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but essentially this uh, the Edelbrock came with this uh, temperature sending unit, um, the ProFlow, um, and um, it connects to the ProFlow um, CPU or the, the processing unit there. And so um, this one I put in because um, I need to have it go to my gauges. So this is the painless harness that I connected here. Um, and that's gonna connect up to my um, instrument cluster in the, in the uh, cabin there. <laughs> 